As someone who's owned a business for multiple years now, I feel like every single year I'm just learning so much more than the year prior and really having these big lessons in my business. So today I wanted to share with you the top business lessons that I have learned in 2024 so far because we've still got a few months left of the year. I'm Kristen Buscan. I've been a full-time creator for over three years and I've brought in over $350,000 from sponsored posts and content creation collaborations with brands so far. Social Scoop is the podcast where we teach you, the entrepreneurial creator, to turn your online influence and creativity into a profitable, self-sustaining business. I first want to start off by talking about the thing that truly changed my entire year in 2024, and that is the 10x is easier than 2x method. Maybe you've seen the book that's bopping around the internet. I feel like I've seen so many people talking about it. The book is called 10X is Easier Than 2X. And it really (laughs) changed my perspective on just so much in how I was running my company. So I read this book probably back in maybe February. And at the time of reading this book and starting it, I was just finishing up all of my prep work for a launch. At this time, I was doing a course that was basically a cohort-based group course. And I really, really loved it, but I found what I did not like about it was every single time I wanted to have a new cohort of this course, I had to go into like high sales mode and I only had a certain amount of time to sell it, right? Because the the cohort would be starting at a certain date. And so that was always something that felt very high pressure for me. And I really hated those times because I think it was very easy for me to feel like frustrated or like I was failing if I didn't get enough sales to run the cohort as big as I wanted it to. And so I was kind of already struggling when I started to read this book. The premise of the 10x is easier than 2x method is that it's actually more simple for you to grow your business by 10 times than it is for you to make two times your income. So For example, if I right now, let's just for round numbers, making $100,000, if I wanted to make $200,000, I might be like, okay, I need to get like a few more people in my course. Maybe I need to come out with a new like, you know, low ticket offer. Maybe I need to start dog sitting a little bit more. And I'm pulling myself in so many different directions and just kind of trying to like hustle, 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 hustle to 2X my business to make that 200,000 versus the 100,000. But if I were to take 100% of my effort or even 80% of my effort and put it into something that I can really grow, it would actually be easier for me to make 10 times my income versus just that two times. And as I was reading this, it kind of was like talking about how people were simplifying their businesses. And I think that's something that I have personally always struggled with because I'm not like, I like doing stuff, you know, like I love a new offer. I love a new freebie. And it's very hard for me to just like constantly do the same thing over and over again. Um, If you're someone who's into human design at all, I'm a manifesting generator. So I'm the type of person who likes to have my hands in 5 million things, right? So this was very challenging for me as I'm reading this book. I am starting to look at my business and really take, take a deep, hard look at it and say, what am I doing right now in my business that is like a 2x move versus a 10x move? So I, for example, one of the things that I was doing really heavily last year into the beginning of this year, I was doing a lot of like dog walking and dog sitting. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I love my doggies. So this was super fun for me, but I also, it would be like a $20 dog walk. I would have to drive 10 to 15 minutes to get there. Uh, walk for 30 minutes. You know, by the time I, I get home, I'm at least taking an hour for me to make $20. And that's an hour that I just took away from my business that I could have worked on getting a new social suite member in. And that would have been $44 a month for however long they stay in. Right. So you start to take this kind of like hard look at the the tasks, the things that are on your calendar, things that are on your to-do list and ask yourself, what is actually going to help grow and scale my business versus just help me make a few extra bucks. So I, 
at the moment as I was like maybe 30% of the way through this book, again, I'm deep in this, this launch that's about to start. I canceled the entire launch. Like I straight up was just like, we're not doing this anymore. I, I'm not excited about this mostly because I don't want to have to sell this every few months. I really don't. I really, really hate that. It doesn't feel good for me. And because it doesn't feel good for me, I'm not going to keep doing it, right? Like it's not going to be something I'm consistent with. I'm not willing to put all of my energy into that because I didn't like doing it. So I started to kind of think about what are the things that I really, really love in my business? Like what could realistically be something that could 10X my business? And for me, that was my community, Social Suite. Like that's where my heart is. I, I don't need to have, you know, a thousand dollar offer. For me, it's just like, that's what I want to put my energy into. That's what fuels me. I feel like every day when I come to work. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to get rid of everything else. I'm going to literally get rid of everything else. And I'm going to put, 80% of my energy into social suite, the other 20% maybe into just kind of like general business things. How are we going to grow? How are we going to scale? But majority of my energy is going to go into social suite. And that was a really scary move to make because that's $44 a month, right? It's a very low ticket offer. Obviously people can stay in it as long as they want to. Um, but there's no guarantee that they're going to stay more than one month, right? So I'm trading in essentially a six, $700 course for something that's $44. And that seemed kind of backwards to me at first, but I really understand and I really believe in the methodology of I'm going to put my energy into this one thing and really, really let it grow and blossom versus being stretched in 50 million directions. One of the other things that I did when I was, again, like really trying to figure out how I could 10x my business instead of 2x it was I started to outsource a lot more. And I know, again, you're thinking like, okay, you're kind of giving me a lot of things that sound like you're not making money. Um, but the cool thing with me outsourcing is that I was still able to keep some of like my social media clients. I was able to keep some of these like outside things that I, again, were pulling me in multiple directions, but I let my team take on a majority of the tasks to accomplish those so that I can still have that income, at least some of it. Again, I'm paying a contractor to do some of it, of, of course, as well, but I'm still making a little bit of that money. And now I'm able to put so much more of my time into what I am really expecting and excited about growing my business on. So that is what I did at the beginning of this year. It was a very, very scary thing to do. Um, action steps after listening to my story here on this method, I would highly recommend you even pause this and go look at the tasks that are like on your to-do list for the rest of the week or even the rest of the month. Or maybe you are going to go look at your calendar. Are you wasting your time on calls of, with just like people that are not going to actually help grow your business. Like it's not really going to move it in the right direction. Um, I, I started saying no a lot more. Like I really am learning how to value my time and figure out like, is this going to help me grow the way I want to grow and how much I want to grow? If the answer is no, I won't do it. And I feel no guilt because at the end of the day, like when you own your own business, you are the only person looking out for you. You have to be the one to have the discipline and say, I'm not going to do this, or this is a good move. Like it's all banking on what you feel in your gut and what you think is right. And so I think you have to listen to that and, uh, really, really make those decisions in a very smart way, very picky and choosy different way. The other thing that I learned this year outside of the 10x is easier than 2x method um, was all about like your zone of genius. Have you guys heard of this before? So I actually uh, read this book by Gay Hendricks. It is called The Big Leap. And essentially this book talks about what he calls your zone of genius. So this is basically, and I'm going to read it directly from the definition, the unique skills, insights, and passions that distinguish an individual from others in their field. These are often areas where one can provide the most value and feel the most fulfillment. 
So this is essentially you being able to say, I'm really good at this. I should do more of this, or this is not my thing. I got to let someone else do this. And that's actually something that I've learned a lot about this year. I always knew that I was like a very type A organized person, but I guess I only saw that as like a very base level strength. I never really thought of it as like anything outside of that. I don't need to do like, I should try and take on all of the kind of like organizational tasks because that is truly what I love as a type A person. Like I love buying stationery. I love making a spreadsheet, checking something off my to-do list is like the most satisfying thing I do in my day. Right? Like, so all of those things, I was like, I need to do more of that. And I need to give these other things away to other people on my team because it's not my zone of genius. It's not where I thrive. I'm not better than a lot of things than other people at a lot of things. So one thing that I uh, gave away to a team member was like my video editing for literally these videos. Um, Because realistically, I was like, could I edit this for sure? But is it something that absolutely fuels me and is something I'm super passionate about? You know, not really. Again, I could do it, but I would rather spend my time doing the things that, again, fuel me and I am very good at that I think that might not be other people's zone of genius. Um, I think another thing that's really interesting about this zone of genius concept too, is that sometimes you are almost a little bit too close to it. So I have this conversation with a lot of creators specifically when we're talking about like, you can actually be too close to your own skills and interests that you kind of are blinded at just how valuable they are. And I think for me with kind of my organizational skills and uh, administrative skills, that's something that I always was just like, wait, other people don't like make spreadsheets or other people's spreadsheets aren't as like user-friendly as mine. Like that's so weird. And as I started to kind of realized this, I was like, huh, maybe I'm on to something. Um, I know, for example, like one of the things that I hear from people all the time is like, Kristen, how do you have the time? Like you do so much. And it's because I'm a very, very organized person. And it's almost something that's just so natural to me that when I hear from other people that they're not really organized, like that feels weird to me, right? Like it doesn't, my organizational skills don't feel as valuable because I just do them. I just wake up and that's what I do. But you can be a little bit blind to your zone of genius because it's something that is your genius. You are good at it. It comes very natural to you and you almost devalue it because it's so natural to you. And this was actually something as a coach that I have absolutely learned so much about in the last few years. I know when I first started coaching creators, I gave everyone like the same curriculum. Basically I was like, okay, everyone, here's how you're going to do it. And I found that like some people would struggle with like the spreadsheets and in the planning and like batch creating and all that. And I was like, you know, that's so weird. Like it works so well for me, but that's because I'm a very organized person, right? Some people, that's not the way they work. They need the freedom of time, the flexibility of, you know, are we going to shoot? Maybe we'll shoot it this day. Maybe we'll shoot it that day. Like it's been so interesting to see how different people work and really like appreciate that flexibility and become a better coach because of it, you know, because now I'm not just telling everyone, here's exactly how you're going to do it. Because I know that so many people just work differently. They work better in so many different ways. Um, so this is something to, to think about. The book was so good. It was called again, the big leap. And it really talks a lot about those things like that you're really good at and how you can do more of them and prioritize them. And then kind of maybe outsource other things that are not necessarily in your zone of genius. Another, I feel like these are all like based on books that I read this year, but another one that I read this year was We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. This truly was such a good book. I mean, 
I felt like the whole time I listened to it on audiobook, I would always be in the car and I was just like talking to myself in the car being like, yes, oh my gosh, like, yes, this is so good. I need to write this down. Like, I mean, it, it was a book that I got so much value out of as a, a female business owner. And one thing that I really loved about it was it was very, very heavy on like understanding your value. Um, and I guess figuring out like pricing and what you're going to charge and like why people should hire you. I guess really like a lot of mindset shifts that you should make to understand why you are so valuable and why people should pay for your services. Um, I think deciding your value is one of the most difficult things we do because when you think about it, like, yeah, I charge $1,500, $2,000 for a reel. Does that mean my value ends at $2,000? Absolutely not. So how do you put a number on your value? This is why it's so hard when, you know, we're working with brands as content creators because we don't, we can't safely and confidently put a number on something that isn't tangible right? Like it's something that we make up in our head. What is the value, right? Like it's, it's very difficult to understand. So there's this one part about kind of understanding market value versus self value. How much of the market's value on a, a creator with your follower count and your stats and all these logistics and everything how much should that weigh versus what you are valuing your time at? There has to be some sort of a balance there because especially I think a lot of newer creators who have maybe not a ton of followers, maybe they're still growing their community. So they're like stats are kind of low, but that doesn't mean you're putting any less work into the content than someone with way more followers and a way higher engagement rate would be, right? So like, yes, we have to understand market value and like what other people are getting paid and how we can compare to that. But I think we also have this aspect of what is my time worth, right? Like me taking all this time and energy and money to create this content, what is that worth to me? And there has to be some sort of a, a balance between the two of, of those. Like just because maybe the market rate is low for what you do or your stats or your uh, results or anything like that does not mean that is the end all be all and that should be your rate. I think there has to be some flexibility where you're taking into consideration uh, your self-value. That might include things like your skills, your experience, your unique offerings or your perspective, maybe it's the demand for your work, right? Like you can be a creator with 5,000 followers and a 2% engagement rate, you know, very creating very average content. But if everyone is emailing you, all these brands want to work with you, like you're in high demand. So that should be taken into consideration. Even if again, the market value or the market rate is lower right? Like, I think you should still take those things into consideration. There's a lot of qualitative assets uh, or aspects to your work that have to be taken into consideration. One of the other things that I really loved about this book was kind of like the negotiation tactics that it, it talked about. Um, there was a lot in there about kind of going back and forth and yes, like negotiating and finding a place that's comfortable for maybe you and your client if you're in a field that negotiates. But also, again, going back to being okay with walking away if it's something that doesn't align with you financially. If you know that you're going to end up doing a lot of work and it's going to be like this big thing, you cannot settle for less than you want to make period. Like it's so easy for creators to just say, but this is a really big brand. I really don't want to piss them off. I want to get my foot in the door, but every yes that you're saying to someone that's like mediocre to work with is a no to someone who could be so great. Right. Cause like you only have so much time and energy. So even if you are not 
super high in demand. I think you still have to value yourself. And actually one story I have that reminds me of this, um, back when I was a wedding photographer in my past life, I actually really hated shooting weddings because it was just so much pressure. Like you miss one thing. It's the end of the world, literally. So I, I, stop doing it. I was like, I, it's just not worth the money for me. Like this is so stressful. And at the time I was probably charging like between $1,000 and $1,500 for a wedding. And I was like very, very beginner. Right. So I was like, I'm happy to make a thousand dollars in a day. This is great. Then when I decided I really don't love doing this, but it was so hard to walk away from that. Like I can make a thousand dollars in one day, right? Like it was very, very hard for me to walk away from that. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to like triple my price and I'm literally just going to like see what happens because everyone's going to look at it and say it's way too expensive. So I raised my prices to like 3,000, 3,500 and I booked more weddings than ever, literally than I ever had at $3,500 a wedding. And that's literally because people look at how you are valuing yourself, right? Like if I'm charging $3,500 for a wedding, there must, they're saying, wow, like compared to thousand dollars, what other people are charging, she must be really good. And so people perceive that number. And if you are going to lowball yourself, most other people are going to do the same. If you have a brand reaching out to me and you, you're like, yeah, my rate's $50. They're going to be like, well, it can't be that good. You know, like, sure. We'll take it on for 50 bucks. Cause we've got $50 to spend, but like, no one is going to be like, wow, they must be the best creator. They're going to create such amazing high quality content for $50. Let's be honest. Right. So keep that in mind too. Like, the way you price yourself has that outside perspective uh, for other people on how they are also going to perceive you. I just love thinking about like the psychology of value and, and money and everything. So this was a really, really good book for me to dive deeper into that. Um, it's very, very mindset heavy again on just kind of as a female business owner, as a woman, really understanding your value and like putting your foot down when it makes sense, which is always. <laughs> so, okay. After listening to this, here's your homework. Ready? First things first, you're going to go through your calendar, your tasks, your to-do list, whatever. And you're going to look and see what is in here that is pulling you in a million different directions versus allowing you to focus on the one thing that is going to blow up in your business. So one thing that's going to be the most beneficial, the most exciting for you. That's the first thing that you're going to do. The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to go online and type in zone of genius, and you're going to take some quizzes, read some articles, and also pay a lot of attention to the things that people around you are saying if is everyone always like oh my gosh you're so good at visualizing things or whatever it is pay attention to those things we're going to find out what your zone of genius is and then try and do more of that in your business and less of those other things that maybe are outside of your zone of genius and then you're basically just going to go read we should all be Mil millionaires honestly i think that there's so much action yes from this episode, I think that you can think about as you're making decisions, especially with pricing, but just reading this book and like understanding that we have so much power in how much money we are making. We literally are the ones who decide how much money we're making. Like you, you literally decide. I decide how much money I'm making. That's crazy. That's so much power. And that yet there are so many of us that do not understand that we can do that, right? Like they don't understand. We don't understand that we have that power. So go read that book. You'll feel just like on a high. I loved it so much. Um, also another book too, as a side note, uh, you are a badass at making money. I have to say this whole, like you are a badass series. I was very often just kind of putting off as like, it's probably so corny. 
Um, I still haven't read the like original one, but You Are a Badass at Making Money was so good. It was so good. And it was definitely a book that I thought was gonna be very, very corny. Uh, highly, highly recommend reading that one. So you've got a few books on your list. I'll leave them down in the show notes for you. You've got a few action items. Send me a DM and let me know how everything is going. And I will see you guys back next week.